Hey guys, it's me, Magic Keys, and I'm going to be talking about my eating disorder and my recovery from my eating disorder because ever since the Shane Dawson video where Eugenia talked about her story finally for the first time ever, I just felt like inspired to make this video for some reason because yeah, and I know there's some controversy surrounding the the video that Shane made, but I'm not going to be talking about any of it, as it's not my place, and things were said that shouldn't probably have been spoken about publicly, and I do have my own opinion on it, I thought about making a video on it, but it just really isn't my place to speculate, any, and if the things said were true, just exposing it might hurt Eugenia still, even if what was said about her recovery process is true. So yeah, I'm not going to be discussing that in the video, <laughs> but before I started, I am going to put a trigger warning because I don't think I need to explain why there's a trigger warning in this video. But yeah, a trigger warning for eating disorders, depression, all that fun stuff. Um, but yeah, um, I'm gonna say my, for me, my eating disorder doesn't feel as legitimate as some of other people's. Now that's silly to say, because people might go and like, oh no, you're valid, it's cool, whatever. <laughs> Don't say you're not valid. But my eating disorder, I don't feel is as dramatic as some, as serious, I guess. I mean, mine was still pretty serious, but, um, yeah. Because, for me, it was, it's, it was it was very off and on. Um, I always knew what I was doing. I was never in denial. I know some people were in denial about their situations. Like, Eugenia didn't realize how bad things were, or exactly what she was doing. Or I was always hyper aware of it. I knew everything that could happen to me. I knew what I was getting into. And I, there was a tiny bit of resistance. Sometimes there was resistance, sometimes there was not. And it felt like I just kept recovering, relapse, recovering, relapse. I'm like, okay, I don't want to do this anymore, but then I would do it again anyway. And my weight loss wasn't dramatic when I was in my eating disorder. Um, I think I was already underweight, but I, didn't, I don't think I lost much weight from it. I just think that I kind of stayed the same underweight spot and... And it just wasn't that thing. And when I was... It's a complicated story. I'll get into it a bit more later. But when I was forced to eat more, um, I did gain a good amount of weight. And I think that's where I was, I'm supposed to be, where I'm at now. But before, I was just still underweight because my relationship with food hasn't always been normal. I've always ate. Not much. I've always been, I guess, a bit restrictive, but not full-on anorexia or anything at that point. So I was just already underweight and just didn't lose much. I don't know why. I think some people just don't lose weight. And even though I was at a place where I think I was a bit underweight, it just... I don't think you could see that there was absolutely a problem like you could with some other people if you didn't know what was going on in my head. <laughs> Although my mom did say that I did look too skinny, but whatever. <laughs> so I guess we should go to the beginning. I don't know how long this video is going to be, but I think the beginning is a good spot. So the beginning is a bit weird because in the beginning, I don't... It didn't really seem like an eating disorder, like, you know, it, um, sorry, I'm awkward talking about this. It, I haven't really explained it like this verbally 
I think I've written about my experience a few times, but I haven't actually sat down, talked about it. But in the beginning, I was struggling with depression. And very bad, bad thoughts. I was, there was a lot of suicidal ideation. There was a lot of pain. There was a lot of very violent and fucked up thoughts that I couldn't control as it just kept coming at me and coming at me and everything was very rough and terrible and bad. Um, so yeah, there was a lot of that and one time I, I wasn't taking care of myself and I just didn't eat. I don't know why. I can't really say. I think I just forgot my lunch or something and when I wasn't that day when I didn't eat, I was too distracted by my hunger that my thoughts just weren't around. And I thought, well, if these thoughts are stopping, I guess not eating is the solution to this. And then, when I was I would not eat lunch. I was consistent. Don't eat lunch. You won't think about it. It'll be good. And then eventually the thoughts came back. So I did it more. Okay, less meals, less food. We're good. And it was just a vicious cycle of doing it because of my depression. My depression getting worse, then it getting worse, and then it getting worse because of what I was doing. So it would just, it would go in a cycle. And my mom found out about this, and I didn't get a therapist. But <laughs> my therapist during that time, um, I don't know if they're the best. We didn't really talk about the food thing. We just talked about my depression and my dad and all that stuff. The food wasn't really brought up, I guess, and I think I was asked about it and I said, oh, I'm not doing it because I feel fat or anything, so I don't think I'm anorexic or anything. And then I ended up stopped seeing the therapist because she wasn't telling my mom about what I needed, like, does she need meds, does she need more therapy, does she need someone more, you know, there was no communication of what I needed, and my mom got frustrated at that, so we stopped going. And then in seventh grade, it started, it started getting more like a typical eating disorder with the whole weight starting to become a focus. Um, my confidence was ongoing failing, my self-esteem was bad since, um, fifth grade, and it, it got worse. And gym, I've always been bad at gym. Ever since I was in elementary school, I'm not a very good person at gym. I'm not physically fit. I'm not in shape. So it just got to me more like, okay, maybe I'm like this because I'm fat. And I looked at all the other girls and they seem to be skinnier than me when I have these like thick thighs or whatever. And, changing and all that stuff. It just, my self-confidence got worse and I was telling myself I'm fat now. And, um, I started serving again. This time, it, it seemed more intense. Um, I, I was in cross-country because my brother and sister was in cross-country. So I was told, okay, join cross country, because maybe you'll be good at it. I knew I wasn't going to be good at it because I'm a terrible runner, but that's besides the point. So I was running now, cross country, and I wasn't eating, and during practice, I didn't really drink water. Uh, now that's important. I didn't drink water. I was running. Um, I didn't have any food. I felt terrible. I don't even remember exactly everything that was going on in my head during that time. It just, it just was a thing. And then cross country season eventually stopped. I ended up dropping out, kind of. Like, I was still there, but I didn't compete in any of the meets anymore. 
So I no longer ran. I no longer um, really participated. So I think I don't even remember. I don't. I don't know how I really like got through that because I didn't really eat lunch or dinner or anything. I just and I wasn't drinking enough water at all because I didn't bring a water bottle. I don't know why. Because you think I would. Water has zero calories, I think, so what would that really do? It's just, I guess I was very self-destructive at this point, um, and I felt bad because I wasn't a good runner, and I wanted to be more in shape, and I wasn't, and all that. And then that ended. The season ended. I was no longer in it. Cool, fine, whatever. My mom was aware. Oh, she's not eating. You need to eat to run and all that. Da 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 da. But yeah, I stopped running. Um, in the season ended anyway. And I think there was a like a, a bit of a time where I actually did do a bit better with eating and all that. But um. It started again, and I was looking up to people online. I'm not going to say their name because I don't want them to get blamed for me. Um, I joined pro anorexia kick groups, um, where we would talk on kick and give each other tips on how to get away with it, or inspire each other to like keep going and all that, and we would have goals and calorie limits and mean spo and sweet spo and all that. If you don't know these terms, um, mean spo is when you're mean to the person, i.e. you look so fucking fat, why would you fucking eat you pig? Or something like that. Um... And then Sweet Spo's like, oh, you can do it, I believe in you, you're gonna make it to your goal, honey, it's okay that you had a burger or whatever, um, well, we'll help you get back on pace, you know, and, you know, we'd post Sweet Spo of, like, other people that we'd look up to, and all that, and just talk about our problems with it, and I was in this kick group, and, and it was just very very bad and at the time I was also in a bad relationship I don't take this relationship seriously anymore because I live in middle school but whatever I was in a bad relationship and I thought maybe if I lose more weight they might like me again wasn't true at all because they didn't want me to but my mind convinced me of it and and I would keep all my uneaten lunches in my book bag. I don't know why I didn't just throw them away. But yeah. <sighs> Sorry, it makes me a bit sick to think about the uneaten food. Um, and this time I think my mom thought I was bulimic. She thought I had bulimia, which, you know, I was anorexic and not bulimic, but yeah. She thought I was bulimic, and I think I took a bit of offense to that, like, I'm not bulimic, I'm anorexic, and she used to tell me things like, you're going to eat at lunch, even if you throw it up right after, and, um, I did try, I gotta say that, I did try to purge, but just, I couldn't, like, this, this is gonna be graphic, nothing wouldn't come out, like, I tried to stick you know, with my fingers down to do it, but it just wouldn't work, and I think I didn't want to, I, I tried to fight it a little bit, like, okay, I shouldn't do this, um, this isn't good for me, I'm not gonna do this, whatever. Um, but yeah, and I got to the point where even when I was in school, I'd look up Finspo and stuff, and I'd admire this person online, which, once again, I'm not gonna say their name, because I don't want them to be blamed for it. And, yeah. And then my mom, one day, decided to look at my book bag. I don't know why, I think it was to get my gym clothes out. She saw all the food and told me she did. And she saw my trash can, too. Which had all the dinners and stuff. And... 
the next morning I woke up and she talked to me and she said, I'm gonna take you to the doctor and stuff. And all day at school I panicked about it because I'm like, I don't want to go to the doctor, I don't want to get better or whatever. She actually didn't take me to the doctor, um, I don't, I'm not sure why, but she just didn't take me. She didn't end up taking me, she changed her mind, but she now is going to watch me eat every single meal that I had, not lunch, because that was at school, of course, but she was going to have me sit in the room with her and watch me eat dinner and was not going to let me, you know, use the bathroom after I ate in case I was polemic, because I think she thought I was, but <laughs> I wasn't polemic. Um... <sighs> Happy thoughts. <laughs> but, and it was just hard because, yeah, eating again is part of it, but you have to decide for yourself and you have to have more than just being forced to eat food and everything will be fine and dandy. But I think I did in that time, I was like, when she was forcing me to eat food, I did decide for myself, okay, let's just get better. Let's just, let's just not do this anymore. But yeah, before we get into that though, I'm going to talk about a bit more about like what it was like to actually eat food. Um, we'd go to a, re it was, like I said, I wasn't always so focused on it too. That's why I don't feel like it was legitimate because I would go to a restaurant, I'd get my food. Wasn't even thinking about my ED. I think this was before I was like really, really focused on it. I think it was before all the pro and stuff. But I would get the food, um, and I'd be eating, and then I'd go to take another bite, and just my head would get back to me. I'd hear the thoughts again: "Don't eat this. Don't eat that." And I just, I just couldn't put the food in my mouth. It, it just all of a sudden it was. I was eating. It was normal. It was fine. And all of a sudden I wasn't, and I couldn't. And I'd stop eating, and they were aware, of, my family was aware of that they'd seen me, and they'd be like, oh, you didn't finish that, that's why, and I'd be like, oh, I'm just not feeling hungry right now, when my mind would get to me, and I'd just feel panic, and I'd feel scared, and I just felt disgusted with any food. Um, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> also, um, once again, if, if you if you get triggered, please don't watch this, because I don't want you guys to end up getting triggered by my story or whatever. <laughs> um, and then the next school year happened. Um, I think I was doing a bit better. Um, but I was getting better. I didn't want it anymore. I was finally truly fighting it. But I'd go to lunch, I'd eat, I'd go to English class, and I'd look down and I'd see my weight or my thighs, or that's when I look, I would for some reason have to look down and I saw myself and there was a lot of pain and I didn't like what I looked like. I didn't like how fat my thighs were. I didn't like my stomach or anything and I would notice everyone else again and and I'd want to go back and it was just tough because I'd, I'd be there in English when everyone else is like focusing on grammar or whatever and I'm just over here like in pain from everything. <sighs> trying to fight everything, trying to get through everything when I couldn't. Um, and some days it'd be fine, some days it wouldn't be. And there was a lot of like mini relapses in that time. There was times where I went. I got sick one time, so I wasn't able to eat because I was sick. 
And when I was sick, I just, I didn't want to truly have a meal. I'm not saying I didn't eat at all. I'm not saying I fasted for like a month. But there was a month where, um, I didn't eat any of the food. Um, I would have snacks, of course. I was still eating. It's just I wasn't eating actual meals. And because I wasn't eating any actual meals, um, I, I felt terrible and I pinged. Because at the time I was in love and support, <laughs> it was a Discord mental health server. I told them I haven't ate for a month, really. I mean, I had snacks, of course, but I hadn't eat, eaten for a month. And um, they were like, you need to eat. And I was feeling dizzy, and I wasn't feeling well. And I told them, no, I'm just going to get some drink. I'm not going to eat. And they're like, you need to eat. Um, and I feel like it, it was a support thing, I think, but everyone was telling me, oh, you need to get food, like, eat. Like, it felt like everyone was joining out on this, telling me to eat, and I just, I went to the hallway to get water, and I fell over, and it just wasn't good at all. Sorry, I got some messages, I'm gonna check those real quick. Um... Okay. So yeah, um, I was in a very good place. Um, I I'm fr I was also friends with someone. I'm not gonna name them either, but they also had this eating disorder, and it also kind of triggered me a little bit. I'm once again not their fault. I'm not gonna say their name, but they used to tweet stuff like. Oh, I'm so fat, I weigh 90 pounds or something, and calling themselves fat and whatever, and talking about how food was hard, and, um, I would try to help them, and they would try to help me, and I think we accidentally kept triggering each other, which I hope I didn't actually trigger her, but, yeah. Um... I was, then I, I was still kind of recovering again. I still struggled. I still had panic every time I ate food. That wasn't going away. Um, and then I met Cyrus, who's my boyfriend. And I know some people doubt our relationship. I'm, I'm not going to take them seriously because they don't even know us. But they're like, oh, you're fake, you're fake boyfriend. No, Cyrus is not my fake boyfriend. But I'm not going to get into the drama with that. But Cyrus really came into my life. And I'm not going to say, oh, a boy fixed it. Because that seems like Hollywood's trope. Like, oh, a boy comes into their life and they get better. And they make a recovery blog with body positivity in it. And yeah, whatever. It, it wasn't like that. No boyfriend saved me. But... <laughs> Cyrus, um, really helped me start to love myself again, and to get confidence back again. No, I was already building this up, so it's not like Cyrus, like, changed me completely. But he was just really there to help me through it, and to support me through it. And, um, yeah. Our first date, um... I still had the fear of food, and it was worse because he was there and he's my boyfriend. <laughs> and yeah, and then the second date, I also struggled, and he he noticed it, and he's like, "Hey, you're beautiful. You don't have to worry about it. I want you to eat. You know, whatever." Um. Yeah. Um. And then by the time each date. I kept getting a bit better, and now I don't think about food as much. It's still there. I, I kind of went back to old me, where I'm a, I'm a bit restrictive, but I don't. I eat, you know, without worry. 
Although I have eaten more, I do eat much better than I did before I even had this eating disorder because I've always had a weird relationship with food. I've always, like, ate a little tiny bit of food. Never really had much, didn't like much food. Um, yeah. And I got over my thing with, like, chicken because... I eat chicken now. I never really ate chicken before before Cyrus really. <laughs> um I I when I go to a restaurant sometimes I get chicken and I eat chicken now and yeah. Also another thing, I kinda of forgot to mention this, but I also wanted him to be vegan. <laughs> it's silly to say because I really care about animals and stuff, but I wanted to be vegan and with my parents' lifestyle, like, I couldn't be vegan, you know, because, yeah. So, it was also getting to me. Yeah, it's it's not really the main thing, but it was just kind of a side thing, but it was just, I wanted to be vegan. Um, so, it just escalated it, because I wanted to be vegan. I wanted to be vegan so badly, because I cared about the animals so much, but it just... I learned it wasn't healthy, and I should just eat what, you know, what. <laughs> and if I can't be vegan now, maybe later, but whatever. <laughs> but yeah, I wanted to be vegan, so, yeah, and whatever. I don't really worry about that anymore, to be honest. <laughs> but it's just kind of funny. Um, I got over the chicken, which is a fear food. Um, that I had is something that I just never ate either before the eating disorder. I just didn't. I just didn't eat chicken. Like chicken wasn't appealing to me. I just wanted to eat chicken. All I ate was like grilled cheese and mac and cheese and pizza, and yeah, that's about it. I just yeah. <laughs> so I eat chicken now. And I actually eat it, because it's been a process, because even building my stomach up again, because my stomach shrunk, obviously. And now I can almost eat the whole chicken I get it out back. There's still a few bites I leave, but I can eat that now, and I don't worry about calories anymore, because I used to be obsessed with them. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't worry about these things anymore. I mean, some of the stuff's still there. There's still a little bit of fear. There's still a little bit of thought sometimes. Last week, I started thinking about relapsing again, but it's not what I want, and I want to be better, and I want to be good, and I want to be recovered, and I want to have a beautiful recovery story full of light. So, yeah. And I'm fine with myself again. I'm sorry. I feel better about myself. I don't feel as depressed anymore as I did. Life has gotten better for me. And I feel like I have more control over my life again. And I'm no longer on a dark cave inside of my head. I'm no longer in the bottom of the ocean with nobody hearing me. I have Cyrus and I have... The mental health community on Discord, and I have friends, and I have people that care about me and want me to get better. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I do wish I had some kind of um, professional treatment with me and my eating disorder, because I feel like things would have been much easier. But my family just didn't really believe in that, so, <laughs> yeah. Um... I mean, that's all I have to really say about it. That's my story. That's my whatever. Um, if you are struggling with an eating disorder, I do recommend getting professional help and know that you're beautiful. You don't need to lose any weight. And, um, yeah. <laughs> and just, just take care of yourself. There's better ways to lose weight. You can go on healthy diets, not diets that are bad. Be very vigilant about diets. <laughs> but you can go on healthy diets and do some exercise, but don't over-exercise either, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
and body dysmor dysmorphia, not dysphoria, because that's different, that's for trans people, but body dysmorphia, um, get therapy for, talk to someone about it, just know that what the mirror shows you isn't true, always. <laughs> you, you look fine the way you are, and no one's looking at you and going, you're fat or anything, Pe people are sometimes nicer than that, um, Whew. Yeah. But um I want I like I want to say that um Sorry, I don't really know how to end this. Cuz I want to talk a little bit about Eugenia in the video. Um I I I was really inspired by Eugenia's video with Shane. I know there's some drama with the mom that I'm not gonna talk about, but I really hope she's getting better. And I hope she knows that she somehow sees this video too, which I doubt that um we all we're all there for her. We want her to recover. And I am a bit worried about Eugenia. I think that she came back a little too soon, but we're all proud of her and we all hope she gets better. And I really hope that your recovery, Eugenia, goes great, and I hope, I hope that you're getting the treatment that you need, um, and the support that you need, and I hope Eugenia, um, knows that I love her, and, um, I, and I kind of feel bad, because I didn't say anything about being worried before, because I didn't feel like it was my place and all that. But I was worried for for you, Eugenia, and I was hoping that you would get better, and I'm so glad that you did. Um, I guess I'm sorry that I didn't say enough to you about it, about getting better or whatever, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, I think that's it. Um, I might leave a few mental health Discord servers below. I don't know. If, I'm not sure if I will. And I'll leave the um, National Eating Disorder hotline numbers and all that. So yeah, um, this was my story. I hope that I somehow helped with sharing it, which I doubt, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hope that this story means something, I guess, to somebody. <laughs> and... Even if I feel like it's not as legitimate of an eating disorder as most other people's, but yeah. I hope that friend that I talked about earlier also seeks help and decides to get help from themselves. And yeah. I think that's about it. I I don't plan to post all these sad videos. <laughs> In fact, I might do like an outfit clothing haul. Because I bought a bunch of clothes. Like... My mom's bill was like $490 worth of clothes, so kind of like a fall clothing haul. There's some dresses and stuff, but, you know, I might show what the clothes I got, and I might make some gaming videos eventually. We'll see if that comes. <laughs> but yeah, I hope this video has inspired you guys in some way, and I'll see you in the next video where it's not as dark or weird or depressing. Depressing or awkward, which all my videos are awkward, but here we are. But yeah, I do want to say I am getting better, so yeah, and I'm glad I am. And even if you're in the worst place possible, you can still get better no matter what you're going through. Um, <sighs> you can still recover. You can, there's still a light. In your dark caves, there's still someone in the ocean that can help you out of the ocean. Um, self harm's not an answer. Suicide's not an answer. Um, yeah. <laughs> I hope I hope you guys know that now, and I hope you get better. And I believe in you. And yeah. <laughs>
I need to end this. <laughs> I just want to end it on like a good, like strong end, you know. But let's just let's just end it how it is. Um, recovery is possible for everyone.